Hello, my name is Steve Miller, and it's my pleasure to give you my testimony of how I got saved. I was born as an Orthodox Jew in Baltimore, Maryland. I never heard the gospel growing up, and I thought that we were the chosen people, and that the rest of the people didn't know God the way we did. When I went away to college, I got in trouble because in at college, there were riots at my college the year before I went, and they did away with grades for freshmen. So I was a freshman and I didn't have any grades. So I thought, why should I work? I'll just have fun. And then next year when there's grades, then I'll start working. So I got into some bad things. And one of the bad things was marijuana. And that damaged my mind and also made me lazy. And it also uh, took away my belief in God. And I didn't believe in God anymore. I lived in a Jewish fraternity at that time. And our, in our fraternity, we were having trouble because there were a lot of people that were smoking marijuana and we couldn't pay our rent. So the dean of the school housing wanted to help us. And the way he helped us was he put freshmen in our fraternity house to stay there as residents, but not fraternity members, but that way they would help pay the rent. And in his way to try to help us, he tried to pick students who had Jewish last names, except that he wasn't Jewish and he didn't know what a Jewish last name was. So what he picked as what he thought were Jewish last names were actually Eastern European names. So one of the people he put in our fraternity was a Russian named Yuri Pekovich. And he was a Christian who always preached the gospel. And I thought he was crazy, and so did everyone in the fraternity. But another freshman who had been brought up as a Christian, he said to me, you know, Yuri really believes what he's saying. And I thought about it, and I realized, yeah, Yuri really does believe what he's saying. And then I also noticed that Yuri didn't care that people made fun of him. And I thought, wow, I really want that because if people made fun of me, I, I would just be destroyed. So I asked Yuri how he had such security. And he said it was from the Lord Jesus. So I said, how can I get security? So he told me, Pray to Jesus, and he will give you security. Ask him for security, and he'll give it to you. So that night, I did what Yuri said. I got down on my knees, and I said, Jesus, give me security. And nothing happened. So I said, well, the, that isn't real. But one day, Yuri was preaching the gospel to someone else in my room. And... They were just reached a, a standstill in their argument. So Yuri said, Don, why don't you just come and see? And Don says, I'll, I'll never go there. But I was just thinking, maybe this will help me. So I turned around and I said, Don, I'll go if you go. So Don was put on the spot. So he says, okay, I'll go. But it turned out Don never went, but I went. And when I went, it was a church gospel meeting, and it was a potluck dinner. 
And I never saw people so happy. And I remember when I sat down to eat my food, I heard a girl's voice next to me saying to me, Praise the Lord! And I thought, oh no. And then I turned to look at her, and she was glowing with joy. And I said, wow, how did she get to be so happy? And then I saw that there were, it seemed like everybody was like that. And as a Jew, I was jealous. And I thought, this isn't fair. How come these Gentiles have the joy of God? And I never saw people in Judaism this happy about God. And then afterwards, people invited me over their house for dinner for the coming days. And I didn't want to go, but they invited me, so I, I came. But I, I went home that day to the fraternity, and I told my friend, I never saw people so happy. And my friend says to me, well, probably that's because they were dumb. Because people that are dumb, it's easy for them to be happy. But you and me, we're smart. So it's not easy for us to be happy. And I said, oh, that makes sense. Then that next night, when I went over a couple's house for dinner, the father of the family was a Ph.D. architect, and he was very smart. So I realized that what my friend said was not true. But then I didn't come back anymore. But that started me to think about God. And I, just by looking at nature, I said, there has to be a God because everything is beautiful. If you go into the depths of the sea, it's beautiful. You go to a forest, it's beautiful. You go to a mountain, it's beautiful. You go to a desert, it's beautiful. You go to the North Pole, it's beautiful. You go to places where man has never been, it's still beautiful. I said, it's, it seems there is one creator who is a wonderful person. But I said, but how can I know who God is? Well, when I was going home for the summer, I had a problem. And then I got this idea, I said, I know. I'll pray to God about it. So I, I wanted to know what to do in a certain situation. And I said, well, God, if this is true, then you make it happen like this. And I said, but if it's not true, then you make it happen like this. And then I'll know what I should do. Now, God couldn't answer that prayer because that knowledge of, of that wasn't my business. But... God answered the prayer in an in a amazing way. So I, then after praying, I just took the remainder of my goods and went to go out and say goodbye to everyone and go to my car and leave. And it happened just like I had said. If, if, a, if, one, if a was true. So I said, oh, okay. I guess that's the way it is. And then when I went to my car, it happened just the way I had said if B was true. And I was amazed. And I was also happy. And I started driving home. And then it hit me. Ah! Ah! And I started screaming. I said, there really is a God. And he's here with me. And he sees everything I do. <gasps> and I kept going it over in my mind. I prayed this. And this is what happened. I prayed this. And then this is what happened. <gasps> and I was crying. And I was trying to. I felt that I was the most sinful man in the whole world. And I tried to think of someone who was worse than me. And finally, I thought of someone, and I said, oh, okay, he's worse than me. But then my conscience said, no, you're much worse than him. And, and what I, the reason I felt I was the worst person was because I didn't love anybody. 
I didn't love anyone other than myself. So then when I got back to Baltimore, I decided I'm going to find God. And I was taking a walk and I just happened to walk into an empty church building. And there on the table were some gospel tracks. So I just took one and went out. And I read the gospel track and it was a track by C.S. Lewis called The Claims of Christ and had different verses. It says, this is what Jesus claimed. And then it had an argument that said, either Jesus was who he said he was or he was a liar. You can't have any other choice. You can't just say he was a good man. Either he was who he said he was or he was a liar. And I was reading the verses, and, and one verse said that Jesus claimed he was the Messiah. And I knew what that meant, that that meant he was the Savior of Israel. And then I read where Jesus said he had the power on earth to forgive sins. And I said to myself, wow, I never thought of that, that my sins could be forgiven because we were taught that you are judged with your good deeds and your bad deeds in a balance. And for every bad deed, you suffer a just punishment. And for every good deed, you get a reward. But I had no good deeds and my bad deeds were quite heavy. And every day it got worse and worse. And there didn't seem to be any way to reverse it. And I thought, wow, what a thought to have my sins forgiven. But then I kept reading, and then I read, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest unto your soul. And I read that and I said, oh, that's what I need, rest unto my soul. I don't have any rest unto my soul. At that time, because I had been smoking marijuana, I was sleeping 14 hours a day. Yet I didn't feel like I had any rest unto my soul. And I said, that's what I need, rest unto my soul. Then at the end, there was a prayer. It said, Lord Jesus, Forgive me of my sins. I believe in you. Give me eternal life. And then I added, give me rest unto my soul. And I started crying and I felt I believed in the Lord. Well, then I was afraid to tell anyone. I didn't tell anyone in my family, but I told my friend Harvey. And his family was more religious than our family. And Harvey just questioned me. He says, well, why do you believe that? He said, because um, I told him what the tract had said about either Jesus was the son of God or he was an imposter. He said, couldn't you say the same thing about Mohammed or Buddha? And I didn't know. So I said, maybe. So I said, well, I guess I'll have to read more. So I wasn't sure. Then that summer, I just tried to be good but I wasn't successful. And I, I felt condemned. And then it was time to go back to school. And I really didn't want to go back to school because then I would be back in the environment of the fraternity and I wasn't strong enough to be different to oppose the peer pressure of sinning. But I had to go back to school, so I went back. But on the way, I prayed, God, give me a way to follow you. And when I got there, my best friend at college comes to me and says, hey, let's quit school and go traveling across the country. I don't know if he was really serious, but... I was, and I said, yeah, let's do that. So I took it as an answer to prayer, and we just both quit, and we started traveling. 
And first stop we did is at a Salvation Army to get supplies, and I bought a Bible. And I started reading it. And I read as far as Genesis chapter 3. And when I read Genesis chapter 3 about how the woman is supposed to submit to the man because of uh, her taking the lead in, in breaking God's commandment, I thought, oh, that can't be true. That's just made up to put woman in subjection. And I closed the Bible. But then I thought, I just decided to question. I said, suppose, just suppose that did happen many thousands of years ago with the first man and the first woman. Suppose it really happened. What would the world be like today? And I thought, and it was like the world is today. And then I shared that with my friend and his girlfriend who were traveling with us, and they agreed. So then I just kept reading the Bible. And then my friend got tired of me because I was always reading the Bible and just talking about the Bible. So he dropped me off back home. And then, so then that summer, I, or the rest of the, that school year, I worked for my uncle in his jewelry store. And then I tried to look for a job because I didn't think I could go back to school anymore because I thought my mind had been shot. But every time I interviewed for a job, they said, well, you already completed three years of your engineering degree. Just go back and finish one more year. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll go back. I, I thought, well, I'll just, when I go back to school, I'll just go to all my classes. I'll do all my homework and all my reading. And hopefully I'll get C's and I'll pass. So I went back to school. And this time I, I wasn't afraid to live in the fraternity house because I had, I had read the Bible, and I believed it. But I still, I was confused about, is Jesus God, or is he the Son of God? And when I went to, back to school, I, I just went to all my classes, did my homework, and I started getting A's. So I, I was doing much better than I thought. And then I told my um, fraternity brothers, if you see Yuri, then tell him that I want to get baptized at his church. So someone eventually found Yuri on campus, and Yuri came up. And I told Yuri, I want to get baptized in your church. And Yuri said, praise the Lord. So I, I went with Yuri to a gospel meeting, and I was amazed that everyone was, like I remembered, so happy and glowing. And people remembered me, and they asked, Steve, what happened? And I told them how I had come to the Lord, and I also told them that I didn't believe Jesus was God, and then their faces dropped. So they started showing me verses that said Jesus was God, and I I couldn't explain their verses, but neither, I didn't think they could explain my verses to satisfaction. But one verse that really struck me was Isaiah 9, 6. Mm -hmm. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called the Everlasting Father and the Almighty God. And I couldn't explain that. But when I went home to my fraternity, we had a little prayer meeting with three of us, and I prayed about that and said, God, they, these people showed me these, this verse about you, and I can't explain it. Are you God or not? And my, remember, my friend said, Steve, the Lord's going to show you. So then the, the next day, I went over, my friends, over, uh, someone invited me over for dinner, and Yuri was also invited. And after dinner, we read John chapter 14. And the 
Yuri was reading and, 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 uh, the other brother, his name was Dick was reading and they were both praising the Lord and praying as they were reading and, and they were really rejoicing. And I was just feeling sad because I couldn't know whether Jesus was God or not. And then Dick says to me, Steve, we're hogging all the food. Here, you read some. And he wanted me to read right where Philip asks Jesus to show us the Father. But for some reason, I just said, no, I'll read at the beginning of the chapter. And that was John chapter 14, verse 1 says, let not your heart be troubled. And when I read that, I felt that it was Jesus speaking those words in my heart as I was reading it. And when I read, let not your heart be troubled, immediately my heart was not troubled. And I felt like laughing. And then I read, you believe in God, believe also in me. And I said, wow, you believe in God, believe also in me. And I felt, wow, that's so simple. And I also thought, how could I believe in Jesus if he isn't God? And then I read some more and I was so happy, I just started dancing around the house. And then Dick and Yuri also started dancing and we all three of us. Then the next day I was baptized and, and when I was baptized, I felt that unclean spirits were coming out of me and I felt like the Holy Spirit was coming into me. And that, then at that time, I was just so filled with the Spirit on my way home, I was rubbing my heart because it just felt so good. That was when I got saved, that was 1975. So now some 40 years later is 2019. So now, my listeners, this is the message that I would like to bring to you. That the Bible is true. Read it for yourself and question it and ask God about anything in it. And God answers prayer. And Jesus is God become a man who lived the perfect human life for us to live in the same way by his power. And especially for those of my own race, of the Jewish race, I would like to tell you that Jesus is the Messiah that is given to the Jewish people and to the whole world. And as a Jew, as an unbelieving Jew, you've been broken off from the olive tree of God's people. But when you believe, you will be grafted back in and you will fit like a natural olive branch to the olive tree. Now I'd like to pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for everyone who listens to this, Lord. Lord, do touch their hearts, Lord. Open their hearts, Lord. Do answer each one's prayer when they ask who you are. Come to them and show them that you are the Messiah and that you have the power to forgive sins, and that you are the one who gives rest unto their souls. In Jesus' name, I pray. And the, God bless all of you.